Hi there, Aura here, and uh, today we're doing something a little bit different because, as you can see, I don't have anyone here with me today. And that is because I wanted to do sort of a look into the game Magic the Gathering, what the game is, and sort of try to introduce you to the game itself. So basically a rundown of the game itself and the rules. So, with that said, should we get started? Now, if you've watched my two first Tabletop Simulator episodes, you'll know that I have three different decks. I have my Leonin deck, which is white cards. I have my Snake deck, which is green cards. And I have my Rat deck, which is black cards. The Leonin are anthropomorphic felines and their speciality is that they like to be equipped with items. The snakes are anthropomorphic snakes and their speciality is crowd control. They lock the opponent out of combat so that they cannot defend themselves. While the rats they use a specific ability called ninjutsu to be sneaky which allows them to attack the enemy and deal more damage than uh, was intended now talking of colors there's five different colors in magic the gathering there is green white red blue and black each color has their own speciality, and there's even cards that contain multiple colors, commonly referred to as gold cards. You can make a deck of any of these colors, or multiple colors, if you wish. Each color has their own speciality, but they're not specifically bound to it. Green, they are usually large creatures, and they have the ability Tramble, that allows them to, when they are an atta attacking uh, an enemy defense, if the defense does not completely block their attack, the remainder of the damage will continue in and hit your opponent. White, on the other hand, are all about control. They like to remove damage, redirect damage. They like to tap enemy attackers so they cannot attack. They also have the ability First Strike, which they're very fond of, which allows them to strike before the enemy can hit them. Then there's the red ones. The red are generally smaller creatures. They like to stand in the back and burn the enemy from a range without putting themselves at risk, but they also have the ability Haste, where they can enter the battlefield and attack the enemy right away. Whereas when you summon a creature normally, it would have what is called summoning sickness, which means that for the first turn of combat, they cannot attack. The blue color is generally creatures that are very fond of flying. Flying creatures can fly over the enemy and cannot be blocked by the opposing team unless they themselves have flying or an ability that lets them block flying. They also are very fond of drawing cards. Lastly, we have black. Black are darkness, death and evil. They have the ability fear that they're very fond of, which says that if you are not black or you are not a thing, then you cannot block us. So they can be quite difficult to deal with, and they're also very fond of simply just destroying other colours. Now, there's different cards. There is land cards. You can see the type under the picture, there is a bar. You can see this basic land forest. All cards will display their type in such a fashion. A land card is a special card. It is the card that gives you your mana. It gives the mana of its color. The next type of card is creature cards. 
creatures are your basic soldiers. They stand on the battlefield and fight in your behalf. They also protect you from harm. Then there's spells, and there's two different kinds. The most basic one being sorceries, and the other one being instants. The difference is that a sorcery can only be cast during your own turn, either before combat or after your combat phase has ended, while an instant can be cast at any point even in response to another instant, so you can counter a spell by using an instant. Then there's enchantments, and there's two different kinds. There is a basic enchantment, a global enchantment as this one, which has an effect on everything around. And then there's targeted enchantments that can be, for instance, this creature, enchant creature, in this case, enchant creature, uh, which means that this enchantment has to be sitting on a creature to work. Then it will only take effect for that creature. And when that creature dies, the enchantment is destroyed. Lastly, there's artifacts. And again, there is global artifacts, or as in this case, artifact equipments. Global artifacts can generally be used or has a global effect. While equipments has to be equipped on a creature in order to have the effect that they give. If a creature bearing an equipment should die, the equipment is returned to the battlefield on your side so that you can just put it on another creature. Now, when you want to make yourself a deck, what you need to figure out first is what would you like to do? You need a basic idea for your deck and it can be something as simple as I want to make a green deck. Or it can be something different. For instance, in my case here, I started by making my Leonin deck. And the reason for that was I wanted to try and work with this race because it's so different from the usual white card, the white cards that usually wants to redirect damage. These are more offensive and also has the ability of flying. So I wanted to try and make a, um, a deck that was focused around this, rage, this race and would um, stay within their law, so not use artifacts or enchantments or spells from other races, if so possible. My snake deck and my rat deck are both the same sort of deal, in that I wanted to make different colored decks that was focused around unfamiliar abilities. Black, not focused around death and fear, but rather about trickery. While this is focused around crowd control instead of giant creatures that just, that just um, trambles through the enemy. Now the next is, once you have your basic idea, is to set up your deck itself. I find it easiest when I start to decide how much mana that I want to start with. Because a deck can be either 60 or 40 cards. I generally play with 60 card decks because I find that most fun. And the first thing you then decide is how much mana do, you, do I want, which is just a ratio. When, how often do you want to draw mana? How expensive are your cards? If you have a lot of expensive cards, you might want more mana, so it's more likely that you'll get your mana quickly. So I generally go for between 20 and 25 mana for a standard deck. And in this case, as you can see for my rat deck, I have 24. Every other card, you can have as many as you want of different cards. However, you can only ever have four of one card in specific. Now I have here two of five different artifacts. I have two of a global enchantment. I have five different creatures of which I have three of them where I have four, while two of them are only two. Then I have a special card here that I wanted to highlight, which is a special card that says once the top condition is fulfilled, the card is then turned and then it turns into the creature on the bottom. And 
They are both special in that they start as a normal creature, but they end up as a legendary creature. The legendary creatures we will come back to in just a moment, because there is something very important about those. The rest of the deck is then a couple of legendaries, which I have two of each. The reason I don't have too many legendaries is because of a specific rule that I will get into in just a moment. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before we decide what um, or how, really um, go into how to play the game is when you're building your deck, you want to make sure that you have your idea down. For instance, my Leonin deck uses artifact equipments and are based around that, so I generally don't have any enchantments in it. I only have equipments. While my snake deck does not have any equipments whatsoever, instead it has only enchantments. But in almost all cases, you want your basic soldiers so that you can defend yourself and attack the enemy. There are some cases where you can get around that, but it is rare. Lastly, there is card rarity. This is not always applying, but if you look at the type bar, to the right there is a symbol. In this case it is black, which means it is a common card. This one here is silver, which means it is uncommon, while this one is gold, which means it is rare. Generally you can depend on that as a guidance to how valuable or strong the card is, in that more rare cards are generally stronger than the lower ones. But there are definitely good cards amongst common cards, so don't just count them out. For instance, the Okiba Gang Shinobi here is one of my favorite cards from this deck. Now let's get into how to actually play the game. Now as you start the game, the first thing you need to do is decide who goes first. Commonly we do this by either Picking a random card, turning it over, and then looking at the mana cost. In the upper right you see a number 2 and 2 white symbols, which means 2 neutral mana, which can be any color, and 2 white mana for a total of 4 mana. So this card has a mana cost of 4, while the opponent pulls a card from his deck, in this case 4. This is a draw, so we pull again. I pull zero, my opponent pulls zero, another draw. We continue this way until one of us gets, on, gets ahead. In this case the opponent draws one, I drew zero, so the opponent gets to decide who goes first. The reason we do who goes first, gets to decide rather than just plain deciding who goes first by pulling the card, is that some decks might want to go first while others will not, so it is not fair to just randomly pick. Instead we make the winner decide it who goes first, but we could also roll a die to decide it, uh, in which case the winner again would get to decide who starts. Now in this case my opponent won the draw, so he decides. And he might not want to start himself, so we pick our cards. Each picks seven cards. Now if you look at your hand, there is in this case a four mana, so that means that it's a decent hand to start with. You might not want too much mana, but you also don't want too little. But if I did not like my hand, I could return it to the library and pick a new one, take a mulligan, but instead I would then only pick six cards the next time. And I can do that as many times as I want until I have no more cards left to draw. But if I have no mana, there is the rule of taking a free mulligan. If you show your hand with no mana in it, then you get to pick a new hand and do not get the one card penalty. Now my opponent decided that I started the game, so Rather than taking a card, I simply play a mana and say my turn is over because I can do nothing else. 
My opponent takes his turn, but since he is player two, he picks a card. I was player one, so I do not get to, play, to pick a card. But now it's my turn again, so this time I take a new card. Again, it is the start of the turn. I play mana. You will notice that this turn comes in stages. The very first part of the turn is the upkeep. The upkeep is whenever you have cards that are tapped, which means that they are already activated and need to be or recharged in order to um, be usable again. In the start of your upkeep, you usually untap all your cards, making them ready for play again. Then, as the next part of the upkeep is, you pick a card. Following that, you play a land. So, again, you untap, pick a card, and play a land. Then the true, the true part of the turn starts. I have two mana now, which is enough to summon the Leon in Dengar. So, I could use my spells now. Spells can be summoning spells, or spells, for instance, like Razor Barrier. In this case, Razor Barrier is an instant, which means I can cast it any time. But if it was a sorcery, I could still cast it in my turn here. Sorceries, as I said before, can be cast before you enter combat or after, but only during your own turn. So, we have our first spell casting stage where we summon our Leonine Dengard. She now has summoning sickness, which means that in this turn she cannot attack, but she can still defend. So you have to wait until next turn before she can actually start attacking the enemy. So it's now the enemy's turn and uh, he does not do anything because he cannot get through my defense anyway, he doesn't want to risk taking damage. So it becomes my turn, I untap everything, pick a card and play another mana. Then I have enough mana to play my Basilisk Collar. If you look in the upper right it has a 1 mana cost but it also has 2 equipment cost. I have exactly 2 mana left, so I could tap that and equip it directly onto my Leonine Dengard. This gives her Death Touch and Life Link. Death Touch means if she does damage to a creature, that creature dies at end of combat no matter what. If uh, also it has life link, which means all the damage it damage it does will I will gain in life. Now she gets blocked by an. Uh, uh, she also has an ability if you look at her that gives her plus one attack and plus one defense, as well as not tapping when she attacks. So usually when I attack, I would tap her, which means she cannot block. But now she has the ability vigilance, which does that when she attacks, she's still ready to block. She does not tap, so she's not out of combat. But if she, for instance, was blocked by a creature with only one health, she would still only do one damage to it, so it, I would only have done one damage and thus only regenerate one life. But if I attack now and he does not block, then I gain two life from the damage that she did. Now, we continue playing like this, picking cards, casting mana and doing damage to each other until one of us reaches zero health. At that point, that player will die. So, continue playing cards. Yep. Casting spells. Right, stop that. Like that. And continue back and forth until one of us reaches zero health, thus making the other player the winner. Now, there is a couple of rules. Um, they are house rules, which if you are not familiar with house rules, house rules are the owner of a game can state a house rule, which means that uh, it is a special rule for this game. My house rule for the sake of Magic the Gathering follows the old rules because I like them more than the revamp rules that came later. Uh, and that is two rules, that is Mana Burning and the Legendary rule. Mana Burning is very simple to understand. If you, for instance, wanted to cast this sword here, it has a mana cost of 3. But if I tapped all my mana, 
and cast it, then I would have two mana more than I would actually have used to cast it. This mana is laying in my mana pool, and if I end my combat with mana, or my turn with mana still in my mana pool, I will then take two damage because I had two mana. That means you can kill yourself with mana burning, but it makes sense when you have effects in play that, for instance, makes your land give more mana, then you're forced to either take hits or you may uh, have to be more careful with how you use it, always using even numbers, for instance, of mana. The second rule is the, is the legendary rule. Some creatures are marked as legend. Any card pretty much can be a legend. It can be a legendary creature, artifact, enchantment, sorcery, could even be a legendary, although that doesn't matter too much uh, for the sake of the legendary rule. A land could also be legendary. In either case, it functions in the way that if you have two legendaries into play with the same name, either on your own team or on the opposing team. So if the opposing team summons the same legendary that I have in play, or if I'm stupid enough to play another, then they will mutually destroy each other. Now, if my equipment had been on my legendary in this case, it would simply drop onto the battlefield and still be usable for the next creature to enter combat. But that is how the legendary world, the legendary rule and mana burn works, and that is the basics of the game. Now, I hope that this little look into what Magic the Gathering is has evoked some sort of interest in the game, may have made you want to actually try and play this game yourself. So for now though, I wanted to say thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed it. I'll see you again next time. Bye bye for now. Bye!